How's it going everyone? So we did a Roll20 tutorial a little while ago and I'll put something up here by the logo and down in the description so you can guys can check that out if you haven't already. But you guys had questions about how to put in custom character fields into your character sheets because let's say if you have a background that isn't the Alkalite background and you want to put something in from the player's handbook because you've purchased the player's handbook and you want to throw that in there, how are you going to do that? And, and also if you have an unearthed Arcana character class, what are you supposed to do? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's get to it. Hello everyone, my name is Howard. This is the Blue Collar DM YouTube channel, the channel dedicated to breaking down those barriers for new players and dungeon masters alike. I actually stream on this channel, answering your Dungeons and Dragons, Roll20, Fantasy Grounds, any topics related to tabletop role-playing games, starting at nine o'clock here, Monday, Wednesday, Friday on YouTube, then switching over to Twitch at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Link for the Twitch channel down in the description below. If you end up enjoying this video, please give it a like. Also subscribe, hit that notification bell for the channel so that way you get notified when other videos come out for the channel related to your favorite topic, that is Dungeons and Dragons and tabletop role playing. Now, roll 20. So we actually did a tutorial video, like I was saying in the intro, about how to make your own character sheets. Now, the only thing was is that we didn't cover how to put in those custom fields so that way you can kind of make the character the way you want them to if you want a different background out of the player's handbook. If you want to put in some Unearthed Arcana character class features into your character sheet, there's not a really good intuitive way to do that. And so that's what we're actually going to get into today in this video. And so without further ado, let's actually go over the computer and let's do that. All right, guys, so now that we're over here at the computer, we're actually going to go over to our Roll20 character sheets and kind of talk about some of those custom fields that I was talking about in the intro. All right, so now we're over here. We have this character that I actually created last night on the live stream, but uh, I wanted to kind of showcase um, what I'm talking about when I say custom character fields. So one of the ways that I can show that the best is actually putting in a background that's custom. So in the standard rules document over here, when you go to backgrounds, you only get the Acolyte background as part of the uploaded software here. But you do have access to look at the basic rules document from Wizards of the Coast as well. And I'll put a link to that down here. Um, it's different than the SRD. It gives you a little bit more, but I'll show you guys that in a little bit. Um, and like I said, I'll throw it down here. But uh, this is the uh, basic rules document. I'm actually taking the full hero background out of this in order to do what I want it to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little gear and you'll see there's actually specific um, pieces in here that you normally don't see when you don't click the gear. So if we come in here, we can throw our background in. I'm going to put folk hero because I can't drag and drop it over. And then I'm actually going to come down here and I'm going to add the special trait that it gets. So if we actually go back to the basic rules document, you'll see that it gets this feature called rustic hospitality. So if we actually go back to here, we're going to add that feature. We'll even call it rustic hospitality. This isn't a racial feat, this is gonna be a background feat. And we're gonna put in here, it's from Folk Hero Background. And then, or actually, we'll just put Folk Hero Feature actually instead, because that's really what it is. And then we're gonna come down here, and this is this field's gonna let you type in whatever you want. So I've actually already kind of taken it out here on, the notepad, on a notepad, so I can quickly refer to it and actually copy and paste it in there for you guys, to make our lives a little easier. So there you go. So we were able to kind of put that custom field in and now we can actually hit this little gear button. It's going to lock it in here. And now you can refer to this whenever you need to. So under normal circumstances, if you brought the Alkalite one over, it would actually give you the, um, there's actually, if you look in here, there's the um, shelter of the faithful feature. Well, we don't need that with this character because we picked the full hero background. So it's going to add that rustic hospitality feature in here for us by just putting it into that custom field. And then we can actually click on it to minimize it. Um, you can actually do that with all of these, so if you need to read it. I actually added Genie's Vessel because this is actually one of the Unearthed Arcana um, recent ones that came out. I'll put a link to that down in the description as well if you guys want to check out some of the Unearthed Arcana stuff. But this is the Unearthed Arcana Genie um, subclass. And if you ever need to delete an item, you can come to this lock and you can hit the trash can and delete it for you. So, easy enough. Um, from the Folk Hero background, we'll also add in our proficiencies here. So we get animal Handling and Survival. So we'll just throw that in here really fast. And then the same thing goes with these personality traits. You can put custom fields in here as well. And this kind of basically works for all of these. Anytime you click the little add button, you can kind of fill the fields in as you need it. So we're gonna add a personality trait here. It looks like I do need to keep it unlocked like that. So the personality trait ones are a little bit different where they have this little dotted yellow line that tells you you can edit it. Um, but when you don't wanna edit it, you can just hit that little gear and it'll lock it in here. Same thing with this. It'll actually bring it to the normal character sheet that you usually see instead of seeing all this extra stuff. But um, we'll just actually lock it in right now so we can see it all. So for the personality trait, I actually pulled out the one I wanted on my notepad as well. So I'll bring that over here in just a second. And I picked the, I judge people by their actions, not their words. We'll lock it in. And now it's in there in our character sheet permanently. So it looks nice and clean. Um, and now we can't alter it by clicking in here 
at all. And the only way we can alter it is by clicking that uh, gear icon and bringing it back. So then the next thing I wanna show you guys is actually how to make your own custom tool proficiency. So I've already put in my Thieves Tools one over here. And if I come over here, I can actually pull it out. And then there's different ways that you can actually choose for it to kind of pull the information based on which attribute you want. So under normal circumstances, you want your dexterity to be your Thieves Tools check, but it could be different depending on uh, what you're playing as a character. But let's say if I wanna put something else in here. Let's say I wanna put in that I'm proficient in Smith's Tools. And we can say we're proficient. Now, if you're an artificer, you can actually be of an expertise and then it's gonna double your ability score increase um, depending on what you need it to do. So if, you have, if you're an expert in Smith's Tools, it's gonna to double your proficiency bonus for you automatically. Um, so that happens a lot. If you're a jack of all trades, being a bard, it's gonna change it for you. Um, we're just gonna add it as a proficiency. And instead of saying it's based on our strength, we're gonna base it off our intelligence. Maybe this guy uses his Smith's Tools in a much more thought-provoking way. Maybe actually it'd be better to use Tinker's Tools. So let's actually change that because that'll make more sense. So Tinker's Tool is proficient, he uses intelligence bonus, no modifiers in addition to that. Um, we're adding our proficiency bonus plus our intelligence modifier to the roll, and that's how we get that plus four. We can lock it in with the gear, click on it, and then now it's gonna produce that check for us. So easy enough. So that's basically kind of what I wanted to cover. I wanted to kind of give you guys a good um, general overview on how to add your own custom tools and also your own custom features into your character sheets. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually going to end our discussion about how to take those custom character fields within Roll20 to make those awesome characters that you want to play in your Dungeons & Dragons campaign. Now, I'm sure you guys have some questions. Make sure you leave them down here in the comment section. I'll be answering those questions. Also, if you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified when more videos like this come out for the channel. Also, if you have some questions that weren't answered by this video or any other videos that I already have on the channel, come down to the live stream. I'll be sure to answer any of your questions in there and actually tailor some answers specific to your situations within your games, whether it be how to use Roll20 or just campaign building and campaign prep. Um, that live stream is gonna be here on YouTube, Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 p.m. And then we're gonna switch over to Twitch at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Link for the Twitch channel down in the description below. I hope you guys learned some stuff today. And um, honestly, let me know if you guys need help. I'm, that's what I'm here for. I'm a resource for you guys. Until next time, happy gaming.